Oh, Beasley! Bartleby! Oh, so good to see you. Have you been successful on your journey? Why, yes. Yes, indeed. I discovered several new words for our queen. Oh, wonderful, stupendous, magnificent. I found words with the same or similar meaning. Those are known as synonyms. Fantastic. The words I found were new to me, and I learned what they mean. Oh, that's so cool. Let's get them to Queen Beatrice. something called synonyms, meaning words that have same or similar meanings. I discovered stupendous, magnificent, and my very favorite, splendiferous, which all mean excellent. And I discovered transparent, meaning see-through, and sufficient, which means something is enough. Well done, friends. We shall add those to the hive. I am excited to see what you bring me next time. Hooray! Hi, my name is Caitlin and I'm a teaching artist at the Van Wazel Performing Arts Hall. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own bees and beehive to start collecting your very own buzzwords. Okay, now I'm going to go step by step and show you all the things that you saw in the video so that you can make your very own. If you want to create a backdrop or a background or some type of setting, then you could use a piece of cardstock paper like I did, or construction paper, or you could use just plain printer paper and draw any kind of scenery on it. I used printer paper to cut out my clouds and glued it to the paper using a glue stick, and then I just taped this on my wall for the backdrop that you saw in the video. Let's look at the bees. So to create your buzzword bee, I used a toilet paper roll, or you could also use a paper towel roll and cut it down to the size that you want. And then I just wrapped it in yellow cardstock, or you could use construction paper. Again, you can also use plain blank paper and then just color it however you want to. I created the stripes on our bee using black cardstock, and I used a hot glue gun to make it stick uh, really strong against the cardboard but you could also use tape or a glue stick. For my wings, I cut them out of uh, blank cardstock and you can use whatever type of wings that you want. Bumblebees do have a set of four wings like this, but you can create however you want. I used a Sharpie to draw on my face. And then in order to make it a puppet for the video, I used a wooden dowel and some hot glue to hold it up inside but you also don't have to make a puppet if you don't want to. You could just create the bee itself, but where I wanted to make a video for you, I made it so that I could move it across the screen. Inside of my bee, I used some post-its and I taped it up into the inside of the bee so that as you are collecting your words, you can write down the word on a piece of paper and you can keep that stored in your bee. So like, a bee collects pollen, you can use your bee to collect words. For my queen bee, she's a little bit different. I gave her a little bit of a different face, made her a girl with eyelashes. You can design your bees any way you want. Same thing, she's just made out of a toilet paper roll and I wrapped it in colored cardstock or construction paper. And you can design your bees however you want. Again, I used the four wings for mine. And then for her crown, I just used a blank piece of paper and used a glitter stick to give it that shimmer for my crown. And then I hot glued that around the top. And same thing for her, used a wooden dowel so that I could make a puppet, um, but you can of course just make the bee part of it. 
Okay, so we do use our bees to hold our buzzwords, which we wrote down here. One of Beasley's words, I believe, was magnificent. So I folded up that piece of paper and I kept that with this bee for the video. So as you are collecting your own words, you can keep them with your bee. Okay, now let's look at our beehive. I attached mine with yarn or string so that I could put it up on my wall to do the video. And I would actually suggest hanging it up um, because it is easier to fill the honeycomb with your words on your pieces of paper, but you don't have to. You could also lay it flat and stick them down in vertically. Um, to create this beehive, I used again, toilet paper or paper towel rolls, and I cut them to about an inch long. I did fold them or give them these creases. You can see that sharper angle here so that it looked more like a honeycomb, but you don't have to. You can, of course, just keep it that circular shape of the toilet paper roll. And I used a hot glue gun uh, because tape or the glue stick wasn't quite strong enough with the cardboard. So make sure that you have an adult or an older sibling help you with a hot glue gun because, of course, they do get very hot. So I glued all of these together and created this shape. You can make yours as large or as small as you want. I just created mine in what I thought looked like a beehive shape and then tied it up like this. So then you have all of your pieces of paper that you can write down words as you come across words that inspire you or that you don't know the meaning of. Write it down on a piece of paper and you can put it in your honeycomb when you go through and learn those words so that you have them all in one place. And it's a great way to fill up your vocabulary as you're filling up your honeycomb. So I talked a little bit about what you can use your beehive for. Um, Beasley, she collected words that she just really liked the sound of, like splendiferous and magnificent, and discovered that all of those words are synonyms, meaning that they all have the same or similar meaning. And you could fill your beehive exploring different words like that, filling it with synonyms, or you could fill it with antonyms, which is the opposite. So it would be words that have an opposite definition, like good and bad, or hot and cold. And then our friend Bartleby, he collected words, and I have his words taped inside of him as well. And his words were words that he did not know. They were a little bit larger of a vocabulary word, transparent and sufficient. And so those were words that he didn't know and collected those to put in the beehive. So you can use your beehive for whatever kind of words that you're wanting to learn. I would suggest collect a few words each week, words that inspire you or words that you don't know the definition of yet and keep them with your bee. Let your bee collect all of your words like a bee collects pollen. And then at the end of the week, take your bee and all of your words back to the beehive, go through all of the words with an adult or a sibling and discuss the meaning of those words. See how much you can fill your beehive. Make sure that you fill all of the spaces in the beehive and collect as many words as you can. At the end of the month, see how many new words you have learned. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you had fun and I hope that you continue to learn new things as you fill up your beehive. So thanks again for joining me and be sure to post all of your discoveries, your bee creations and your beehives on our School Time at the Van Wazel Facebook page, hashtag artworksanywhere. Thanks and we'll see you next time.